Hi everyone, this is Lisa Marie from Artistry by Lisa Marie, and today I am coloring in my Christmas pig. This is one of my grayscale coloring pages that I drew in the studio the other day. Right now I'm just putting down an underlayer, or underpainting if you will, of pan pastel. Just a nice underlayer of color. I will be putting color pencil on top, but first I like to add just a bit of color and highlights right off the bat. Fills in the space nicely help sort of guide the other colors that I'm going to be doing. Love it. Next, what I'll do is I use my eraser and I do erase a bit of the pan pastel because I like to have a nice white highlight going on, but then I go right in with my colored pencils. So what I did beforehand was choose the color palette that I wanted. I like to go with pinks for pig. So that first pink that I am using is sort of a darker shade of pink. For grayscale, I like to go with dark, medium, light. Grayscale is as easy as one, two, three. Dark, medium, light. So to start off the bat, I go with a dark, medium, and light shades of pink. And what's fantastic is they are blending with the pan pastel colors that I've already put down. So my pinks are blending together with that pan pastel lilac purple and the yellow pan pastel that I've already put down and they are just going to work together to create a really nice sort of hue and range of colors for the pig tone. Uh, right now what I'm doing is a lighter shade of the peach or pink. Uh, it's just going to be sort of unifying all that together. For the nose, I'm actually using the exact same shades of pink that I used for the fur on the pig, but I am applying them in a sort of a smoother way. Next, I go and I push my shadows a little bit darker. This is a darker red that I'm using now. And what I like to do, especially when I'm doing pushing my shadows and highlights, is I move my pencil with the fur. So I actually move my pencil and apply my colors in the same direction that the fur is going. I don't go back and forth, so there's no cross-hatching sort of action going on. Uh, I like to push my shadows constantly. Uh, I think it helps add volume, and it also helps sort of enhance the texture and the look, especially with animals when there's a lot of fur. And I really love the way that it sort of helps bring them to life and help them sort of pop off the page a bit when I push the shadows just a little bit more. I'll always go back uh, with a grayscale and after I apply some darker shadows, I take my medium pink or medium color that I used originally and I will blend the shadows like I'm doing right now. It helps them sort of smooth into the whole thing. Uh, then I'll go back and keep pushing a little bit more. So it's almost cyclical. Uh, I go in a cycle. I'll go darker, then I blend with more of a medium or lighter tone, then I go darker. Right now this is one of my favorite color pencils. It's a dark blue. I don't usually use black to push my darker, darker shadows. I prefer the dark blue. I feel black is just a little too bland. It's a little too flat. The dark blue just really helps pop the colors off the page without you know, taking away the texture and that nice rich color scheme that I've already worked with here. A little bit of white pencil, of course, to keep pushing those highlights a little bit further. A white pencil is very, very soft here. It's not going to intrude too much with what I'm doing with the rest of the color scheme and with the textures, but it will help. You can see it just helps bring it up a little bit more. Now, I don't apply pen pastel to eyes usually. I like eyes to be very crisp and very shimmery. Uh, so I just go straight with the colored pencils and I prefer colored pencils with a very sharp tip when I color in eyes. Sharper tip pencils make for a much more crisp colored in image. Um, and then actually the opposite is true. A more dull tipped pencil makes for fantastic fur texture if you want something very, very soft and gentle. Uh, the pencils I'm using on that nose right now, for example, have softer tips. They're not freshly sharpened. And that's how I'm getting that nice sort of soft look right on the nose. This is actually a uh, pen or paint pen that I'm using now. I really wanted to push those white highlights a little bit more. I wanted the pig to really stand off the page. And white highlights, really bright white highlights in certain key areas can definitely do that. I'll even put bits of white strokes of paint uh, right over the eyes. 
Next, adding a bit of red to the head itself. Red is very special. I love red. I think it's a fantastic color, but it is a showstopper. It'll take all the attention away. So when I add red, I try to do it a little sparingly at first, just to make sure it doesn't take away the whole show. Picked out my palette for the red hat. It's actually just several shades of red that I will be using. Dark, medium, light. Again, grayscale, easy as one, two, three. Dark, medium, light. Here I'm just slowly adding another layer of red over the red pen pastel that I've used. I do go a little slow when I mix layers, especially of a stronger color like red. I like to take my time. I want to make sure that I'm not going too dark too fast. You can always go back and add more color. It's very difficult to take away color once you put it down on paper. Building up my shadows slowly. Going back, just adding more red. And I'm staying away from the edges a bit too, if you'll notice. I'm trying to keep track of where my light source is coming from in this drawing. I want to make sure that I stay consistent with my shadows and my highlights. That'll help add to the sense of realism. Now I'm just taking that same peach color that I actually used in the pig, and I'm using that here as the highlight color in the hat. And what that'll do is first it'll help blend all the reds together and all the red levels together, but also it'll visually tie the hat in with the pig. Uh, the same color in both elements of the drawing will help tie them together visually. Little white pencil, of course, for highlight. Nothing too strong, nothing too dramatic, but just little touches here and there really make a big difference. For the white trim of the hat, I like letting the white of the paper help me. Uh, nothing wrong with just letting the white of the paper do its job. But little touches of blue here or there. Nothing too outstanding, but just soft touches really help make the difference when adding a sense of volume. Next, I chose my palette for the leaves for the wreath, and again, grayscale, dark, medium, light. I went with a dark green, medium green, and a light green for starting off. And right here, all I'm doing is going through and getting all the shadows, the darker shadow areas of the leaves filled in with my darker green. Next is the medium green. And I'm just going along here, and almost a medium tone in grayscale is like a bridge. It connects the darker color to the lighter or lightest areas of the drawing. It helps blend, it helps soften. I love a great medium tone. And then the lightest green, going straight to the lighter parts of the leaves. This will give them that final sort of three-dimensional look. And I'm not pushing even my lightest green all the way to the ends because what I will be doing is pushing my shadows and my highlights. So now what I'm doing is, again, I take that same dark blue that I used to push the shadows in the pig, and I'm using it now to push some of the shadows in the leaves themselves. Visually, again, using the same color that I used in the pig, this time the dark blue, is going to sort of help tie all of these elements together. Now I'm going to push my highlights with a yellow. This will help certain parts of the leaves sort of pop a bit more, make them a little more unique and interesting. Picking out my next palette. You can see me moving my pencils as I'm adjusting the palette that I'm going to be using next. And now I'm just adding a bit of red to the berries. Dark, medium, light. So I started with a darker red. Now I have a medium red. And the berries are very small. So, I mean, an application of color here is just one quick stroke of the pencil, one quick line. Now here's my lighter. And again, that's that peach that I used in the pig, and I also used it in the hat. Uh, I'm using it in the berries. It's tying it all together. It's a very unified palette that way. Pushing my shadows a little bit more with a touch of a darker red in the berries. Same colors that I used in that red hat. 
touch of white for a little bit of highlight. As long as I know where my light is coming from in a grayscale drawing, it is super easy to get that nice three-dimensional look. Next, I'm just going to do a touch of color in the background. I don't want a very striking background. I don't want a busy background. I already have a lot going on with the original drawing, and I love how those reds just sort of pop off the page. So I'm just adding a bit of a soft blue, same soft blue, again, that I used in that white trim of the hat. So I'm still visually tying it all together with the color scheme but it's just very, very gentle, very delicate application, a barely there touch of color in the background. I love how it just sort of plays all together nicely. Backgrounds don't always have to be busy. Sometimes it's nice just to let them, you know, literally be a background. They can support the main image. Of course, Pan Pastel is great for smooth application, and yes, I just use eyeshadow applicators. I mean, if they're gentle enough to go on my eyelids, then they're gentle enough to go on my stock paper that I use.